Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite creator with a rather slow and unintelligent look about him, Gardner. I actually can't believe that comment. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, three new Linux kernel vulnerabilities that were found. Um, and this one is kind of crazy to me because these vulnerabilities have existed in the Linux kernel for over 15 years at this point. Reportedly, they've been in the code since day one of that code being in the Linux kernel. These flaws can allow anyone who already has, uh, you know, basic level access to your system uh, to gain root privileges. Quote, if you already had execution on a box, either because you have a user account on a machine or you compromise some service that doesn't have repaired permissions, you can do whatever you want with this bug. Adam Nichols of Grim Security. Now, these vulnerabilities are not in the code uh, where they're remotely accessible. This isn't gonna create some kind of remote exploit. Uh, however, it's still a huge problem. If if there's a, an exploit that gets you access to a machine uh, remotely and then uh, you're capable of executing anything on that remote machine, you can probably get root access by using one of these exploits. Grim security researchers were able to dig into the code since it's all open source and being developed in the open, and they were able to find the exact time and place that these uh, bugs were introduced into the kernel. And they found these bugs were introduced into Linux through the iSCSI module, uh, and when it was added to the kernel in 2006, and since then went undetected until just now. Now this flaw actually exists in all Linux distributions, but some of them are more vulnerable than others. Red Hat based distributions uh, in particular will happily load the kernel module uh, with the vulnerabilities without even questioning it. Meanwhile, on Debian based distributions, uh, the initialization scripts check to make sure the hardware actually exists before loading the module. But if the hardware does exist, then you're in the same boat on Debian based operating systems. Because if the hardware exists on a Debian derivative or you're on a, a Red Hat derivative, uh, any old regular user can coerce these kernel modules to be loaded uh, and then from there exploit the system to gain root access. So you might be asking, what the heck is the iSCSI module? Like, what does it do? Well, it's a means of connecting your machine to a uh, remote storage device using internet protocols. Basically, it allows the SCSI uh, block device standard to be transmitted over TCP and the iSCSI module allows your machine to speak the protocol. Now I hear a lot of people saying, what about the hypothesis that many eyes make shallow bugs? Well, this module has been in the Linux kernel for a decade and a half at this point. It's almost legally able to drive at this point. Uh, Adam Nichols has a quote here. Uh, he says, Linux code is not getting many eyes or the eyes that are looking at it are just saying this is fine. The problem is these flaws have existed in the code as it was originally written. So when it was integrated into the kernel, was there just some high level kernel dev who rubber stamped it and just said, sure, go ahead, put it in there. I mean, this raises like a serious question. Like is the sprawl of the monolithic kernel becoming a liability? Because the thing is there have been numerous situations over the last few years where uh, there's been like vulnerabilities in the Linux kernel for decades, decades, privilege escalation glitches, like some of the worst kinds of bugs that you could have. And they exist in the kernel and they have existed in the kernel for years upon years. There have been uh, many people, both in like IT punditry across the web and even in just the comments of these videos, who suggest that like, uh, you know, a micro kernel architecture is superior to the monolithic style kernel of uh, the Linux uh, project, but, I don't know. I mean, Linux is so entrenched at this point. It's like, what can be done about that? I, I understand the idea of like minimizing your attack service. I think that makes a lot of sense. So the question is, uh, what can be done about this? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I, I read pretty much every comment for at least the first few days of my video being up. I want to give a special shout out to Glenn Steen, one of my top tier Singularity members over on Patreon. Uh, my patrons make this show possible. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you guys. It really means the world to me. Uh, if you believe in the work that I do, you can help support the show over on Patreon, or you can become a channel member down below. Uh, either way, if you pledge more than $7.99 a month, you're going to get your name listed over here uh, in, in the credits. So uh, I want to say thanks to all these guys because they really make the world go round. 
I think that's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys uh, have fun watching these videos. I hope you're enjoying these kinds of videos. Let me know what you think of them down below. Uh, but I think that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now and have a blessed day.